am i okay? yes sir yes sir yeah sorry. thank you so let me just introduce sir to you uh, sir is dr varun kumar uh, ips uh, he is now the additional director general of police in uh, state of madhya pradesh and uh, sir had uh, sir is a holder of uh, world record for highest cyber security workshops and uh, sir has uh, also been awarded several awards and is a first police officer in asia to receive the honorary directorate in cyber security and he is also a winner of numerous national and international awards medals recognition in cyber security and uh, if i were to continue to tell about sir and sir's uh, achievements uh, probably the whole session will be meant for that so quickly let me pass on that as to sir so that uh, we will all we will all be benefited out of uh, sir's ஒரு Please, sir. Yeah. Please tell everyone to mute their mic some uh, yeah, so that you know disturbance doesn't come. Anyway, yes, sir. so uh, good evening to everyone, and uh, I uh, welcome you to this uh, talk about cyber crime and uh, the security of cyber crime. That is cyber security. We are going to be together for some time, and we are going to talk about this important uh, issue. And I'd like to tell you one more thing. I am. Uh, i have done my engineering from uh, tamil nadu from trichy so um, uh, i am uh, long back of course 30 years back but i am a graduate of uh, nit trichy and i have stayed in the great state of tamil nadu for four years and i feel it is my second home i really and ganesh uh, who's uh, uh, who's here at the uh, in charge who runs this academy he happens to be the brother of one of my batchmates who studied with me shanmuga sundaram he is i think younger brother so Uh, he is also like my family because i belong to uh, i have spent very good years in tamil nadu and i i love that state more uh, as good as my own home state where i live anyway so uh, when i come and uh, um, uh, i hope all of you are fine if clear ke nalla irke then i will start okay so we are going to talk about a very important topic at any point if you do not hear me or do not understand me please uh, stop me and tell me uh, to uh, Uh, if there is a problem otherwise i will speak because i cannot see anyone i can only see myself and uh, um, other icons so we are going to talk about uh, cyber security let us start uh, i am a police officer as uh, told by ganesh that i have worked in five continents as a police officer i have not gone there to roam about neither have i gone there for training and all that i have worked Uh, in five continents as a police officer in africa in europe in north america in central asia and south asia where we live that is india so i have worked in all these continents and uh, these countries and after working all over the world as a police officer and seeing the security situation all over the world i can tell you one thing and that thing is that if you have to choose one or two of the top cyber to uh, top uh, threats to public security in the world if you have to choose one or two one of them will be cyber security it is that big a problem cyber security is one of the biggest threats to public security in today's age and in the time to come but we do not realize it we feel there is nothing happening in the real world everything we take according to real world so we think that nothing is so what there is nobody being killed there is nothing you know on in the real world so somebody gives us some money somebody is bullied uh, somebody is uh, stalked so we feel it's okay we don't know what's happening it's okay because nothing happens in the real world right so we very lightly but do not take it very lightly it is a very serious problem it is one of the major threats to cyber to the, the public security and according to me my tells me that cyber uh, please do not put on your mic because you are disturbing when i like to tell who mic is on uh, please th- so i will like to tell you this it's one of the biggest threats to public security and uh, the key to cyber security is only one that is awareness whose awareness your awareness the more aware you become the 
more secure you will become in the cyber space there is no other better key to cyber security than awareness so it is time we become aware it is time we start thinking talking doing and we start talking and doing now so let us start uh, it is a time when you can learn when we can understand and we can do okay so listen carefully it is something which is of your benefit and it will help you in the time to come right now i'll uh, go uh, i will the way i'm going to present is first i'm going to tell you some important challenges why cyber security is such a big challenge then i'm going to tell you some concepts and then i'm going to talk about some crime which uh, is uh, being done on uh, students and on uh, young people like you so uh, let us first start with the challenge why is it such a big challenge see uh, and I am going to speak to you as a police officer, correct? I'm a police officer with 29 years experience. I have worked in a variety of fields. I worked in, uh, because it's been my interest, not that I was posted in these fields. I worked a lot in narcotics uh, enforcement, in wildlife conservation, in women protection, in suicide prevention, in uh, you name it, traffic awareness and improvement, whatever. Field policing, community policing, uh, international policing, training. I've worked in many fields, but cybersecurity continues to be my passion and mission. I worked in it for 10 years now, and it is. I was never posted in cyber cell, cyber crime, and all that. You know, it is my passion, my mission. That's why I'm doing it. I want to spread the awareness word to the largest number of people. That's why I'm here with you today. Okay. So I would like to say this: that as a police officer, I'm going to speak to you. I do not pretend to be a very big cyber uh, computer wizard a computer expert neither do i say that i'm some software expert neither do i claim to be some gadget guru or something like that i am only a police officer as a result i will talk to you as a police officer so i'm what i'm going to say are things of common sense i believe as a police officer i've seen security i've seen crime when you have to protect yourself from crime no when you have to do good policing you only need one sense and that sense is common sense it's only for you, also for citizens. If you have to protect yourself from crime, you have to use your common sense. But I have seen so many uh, crises, so much emergency. I can tell you another thing that first sense which deserts a person when a crisis or danger comes, it is common sense. First, unfortunately, so uh, it becomes very uncommon when danger comes. Anyway, but I'm going to tell you things which are of common sense. So. You may some know what I'm going to say today. Some of what I'm going to say today, you may know. You may also know all of what I'm going to say today, maybe. But even if you know everything that I say today, or even if you know something I'm going to say today, I would request you just listen once more. Because if you listen to something again and again, it becomes part of your system. And that is what I want. See, when a threat comes, when a crisis comes, when a danger comes, any emergency situation, maybe a natural calamity, maybe an accident, maybe a uh, you know crime situation. One thing is very important. Remember always your response to the situation. If your response to the situation is immediate, is automatic, then you will be able to save yourself from the situation in best manner. Suppose somebody is standing in front of you with a knife. Are you going to start thinking what you're going to do? If you start thinking, it's going to be too late. If you're going to start doing something, then maybe you will be secure and safe. So you have to have automatic immediate response in threat in crisis situation okay and when is your response automatic and uh, 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 automatic and uh, immediate when it is part of your system you don't have to think you just respond so that is what i want today that even if you know what i'm going to say even if you know some or all of it listen again make it part of your system and give an automatic response even in a cyber crime situation because that is also an emergency and people are not doing it. They don't know how to respond. The response is not automatic. And that is where the problem is. So please listen carefully. Even if you know, listen again, make it part of your system and give it an automatic response. Next time you face a cyber crime threat situation. OK, now having said that, I will quickly tell you why is it that I was saying it is one of the biggest uh, challenges to public security. I will tell you from my experience, please. I have not read this anywhere in somebody's writing, some American author's research, no. What I'm talking is my experience of 10 years and my research, my publication, because I write, I do research, I do publication, I do column, column writing, many things. My experience I'm sharing, please, okay? So according to me, it is such a big challenge to public security. Why? Because it is a different crime. Crime like this, I have seen crime all over the world. I have dealt with crime all over the world. And after seeing and dealing with all types of crime in all parts of the world, I can tell you one thing, cyber crime is different from any crime ever. 
which happened anywhere in the world. That is why it is such a big challenge. The police, that is the security forces, is not in a position to actually understand how best system to put in to secure the people. At the same time, the people themselves are in a problem to think, uh, to know how to do, what to do, so that they become secure in cyberspace. Because it's different. That is why it is a challenge, and that is why it's such a big threat. Now, why is it different, you can ask me. Why are you saying it is different? I will tell you. It is different because, listen carefully, it is not a crime of the real world, this world in which we live, real world, actual world, or whatever. It is not a crime of the real world. It is a crime of a different world. It is a crime of this world, virtual world, digital world, cyber world, device-based world. It is a crime of another world. And please, if you ever think that this is not a world, this is just an activity, I'm just making a phone call. So what? I'm making, it's an activity. Yes, it's an activity. I'm just chatting on uh, WhatsApp. So what? I'm just doing an activity. Yes, you're doing an activity, of course, when you're phoning, when you're chatting. But while you're doing that activity, you're using a device. And through the device, while doing that activity, you are connecting to a world. And that is also a world. Please do not make a mistake. Like in the real world, in the world we live, there are so many dangers, challenges, problems, crime, criminal. Are they not? There are so many. They are also there in this world. Because this is also a world. Never think it is not. As many challenges, difficulties, problems, crime, criminal, they are all there. Maybe more. And the worst is you can't even see them. Can you see any danger here? You can't till it is too late. Till you have become victim of a crime. Then you realize, oh my God, what has happened? Because you never saw the danger. You never saw the threat. And you never felt there was a threat and a danger. You, never, you thought it was an activity. But no, it's a world full of challenges, dangers, and crime and criminal. You can't even see them. That's why it is so different crime. That is why it is such a big challenge. In the virtual world, nobody is going to come with a revolver and shoot you dead. But you can still lose your life. You've heard about Blue Whale Challenge and all that, haven't you? In the virtual world, nobody is going to come with a knife and rob you. But still, you will get robbed worse and you will not even know. So please, it is a different world. It is full of challenges and crime and criminals also like the real world. And you can't even see them. But still, you can ask me, okay, all these things we agree. But tell me still, why can't, why is it such a big threat? I will tell you in one word again. All these things become such a big threat because we are human beings. We are humans, all of us. So we are born in the real world and we are born for the real world. Listen to the concept carefully. We are born in the real world. We are born for the real world. What do I mean? I mean, when you have to live in the real world and that's where we are born and we live, all our instincts, our attitudes, our behaviors, our actions, our reactions are all tailored for the real world. They are not made for this world. And that is where the major problem is. I will give you an example. We are all humans. All of us will have this instinct. You can't help it. You're human. You will be like this. What is that instinct? That instinct says what you see is what you believe. Because you have seen it, you believe it. Because you have heard it with your own ears, you will believe it. So based on what you see or what you hear, then you make an opinion. Then you act, take action or reaction, attitude, behavior. Everything comes out of what you see and what you hear because you have seen it yourself and heard it yourself. This is the real world. Now in the virtual world, if you start putting this instinct, which you will because you're human, your first in instinct will be to do this. In this world, whatever you see or whatever you hear, is it always truth? Maybe not. Because in this world, you can be shown anything. You can be made to hear anything. And if you start believing whatever you see and whatever you hear, then sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake. But you're a human. You will do it as an instinct. You tell me any cyber crime which has happened with anyone you know, that this crime happened with this person. I will take you back in point of time when that person believed what he saw, or rather believed what he was shown and believed what he was made to hear and then did something and became victim of crime. That is a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, you must realize it is a different world. It is a different crime of a different world. And it is full of dangers and challenges that world and crime criminals. You can't even see them. And the thing is, you have to change your mindset. If you don't change your mindset, if you keep on behaving as you behave in the real world, in the virtual world, because you're human, you keep on having the same instincts and the same action reactions, 
you are going to make a mistake sooner or later. Change your mindset. That is very important. Otherwise, you are going to make a mistake and do it from today. It is not the real world. Okay. Don't put the instincts and the behaviors of real world in the virtual world. You are sooner or later, you're going to get into trouble. Okay. Now I'll go to the last point before I start my presentation. The last point is who is responsible for your security in the real world or and the virtual world. Let us talk about that for one minute. Then we'll go ahead in the real world. Who's responsible for your security? In this world in which we live you yourself are responsible are you not the whole day we do things to make ourselves secure without even thinking and we do things because it is part of our system nobody has to tell us when you go out of the house you lock the door does anybody tell you lock the door no part of your system automatic response so you lock the door when you cross the road you look left and right when you go to a city and you see a dark alley do you enter it at night 12 o'clock you don't so, so many are there. These are small, but they are all security measures. We take them all the time in the whole day. We keep doing so many things to keep ourselves secure. Everyone does. So you yourself make effort to make yourself secure. Your family does things to make you secure. Your community society does things to make you secure. Your police does things to make you secure. Governments take out policies to make us all secure. So many people are working, including you, to ensure security in the real world. So many people, so many systems. But do you think crime is over? So many people and so many systems are there in place to save to safeguard us. You yourself are doing all things from morning to evening. Still crime is over. It is not still all types of crime occur in spite of your mind best efforts. This is the real world. Now let us talk about the virtual world. Who is responsible for your security in the virtual world or who can make effort to secure you in the virtual world? Think about it. I always say cyber crime is a crime of a between a person and his device a crime between you and your device is cyber crime who is between you and your device any system is there any person is there just think about it for a minute I will tell you two three examples to make it clear Facebook you also do it I also probably do it anybody can make an account on Facebook if I become a 16 year old girl and make an account can anyone stop me no is there any authentication verification as of today? No. So I became a 16 year old girl. I make an account and I send you a friend request. What do you see in the screen in front of you? A 16 year old girl profile. So you will believe it because you're human instinct to believe. <coughs> so my mistake, <coughs> because you believe what you see, you press the I accept button. But I want to say this, who presses the button? You press it yourself. I don't come there to threaten you or to force you to press. You do it yourself. Another uh, uh, offense is there. It is called debit card, credit card fraud. Somebody will receive a phone call and that person will try to uh, convince him, try to uh, take him in his web. That's phishing also and tries to take personal information out of him. Correct? That some people give that information by mistake again, not purposely, but by mistake. But who gives that information? That victim himself or herself, right? Another example, suppose I want to control your device. I have to send a virus to install a virus in your device. Then I will control it. Suppose I send you a file which says this is a virus download it. Will you download it? No, you will not. So I will send you something which you will download and along with it, you will download my virus. I won't even know. But what I want to say is who presses the download button? The victim himself or herself. So if you are only making giving wrong information on the phone to the wrong person you yourself are downloading the wrong file uh, from the device on in the device you yourself are accepting a wrong friend request then who can save you i told you it's a crime between you and your device is there a one person in the world who can sit with everybody who's using the virtual world 24 7 and tell that person don't do this don't talk to strangers don't accept friend requests from unknown people. Don't download files from unknown source. Is there one person? So many people who can sit with these so many people? There is not. Is there any system which can come between you and your device and prevent you from doing this? As of today, no. So when there is no system and when there is no person who can save you in the virtual world, in the cyber world, then who can save you? Very nice. You can save yourself only. That's why I said you. Cyber security key is awareness. Nobody can secure you in the virtual world as well as you can secure yourself. Of course, there are some technological uh, help which you can get. You can put antivirus, firewall, whatever. You can get some technological support, but that support is also 
as effective as the person who's using that system or device. So nobody except you can save yourself best in the virtual world. Nobody means nobody. Like in the real world, so many people and so many systems. Virtual world, nobody other than you yourself. So when will you save yourself? Obviously, when you know about it. Okay, so knowledge information, very important. That you may have, I told you, we are all, all common sense things. So you may already be knowing it. But even if you don't know, come to know today. So knowing is very important. But then knowing and doing, that is even more important. Because many things we know, but we don't do. Friends, that is awareness. Awareness is not only knowing. That is only information. That is only knowledge. After knowing it, you do something about it. That is awareness. Okay? So today you will know if you don't know. If you know, you will know again. Make it part of your system. Give an automatic response. It's a different world. Please understand. It has as many crime criminals as the real world. You can't even see them. And you have to change your mindset. And once you have done all that, once you know everything, then you do everything. And this gap is always there. You know, I am a police officer. I've seen it. Wearing a helmet is good for your own health security, isn't it? But many people still don't wear it. Everyone knows it, but they don't do it. It is in this gap that most of the crime and most of the accidents and everything occur. So please don't keep this gap. Cybersecurity threats you cannot see. So you feel it is all fun and games, but it is not. So know the problem and then do something about it and do every time again, not sometime, every time. I always say security is a habit. It is not a choice. You cannot do it. Sometimes you go out of the house, you lock it. And sometimes you go out of the house, you don't lock it. Do you do like that? No. Every time you go, you lock. So that's what in virtual world also. You know and you do and you do always. Not sometimes. Like suppose after my talk, I'll say many things to you. Suppose you one thing appeals to you. That I, from today, I'm not going to accept a friend, friend request from unknown source. Suppose you like that suggestion. Then if you like it and you implement it, then you will do it every time. Not sometimes. So please, the key to cybersecurity is awareness. Please know the concepts, then do something about it and do something about it every time. So this, with this, I will start my presentation. Just give me two minutes to put it on the screen and then we will talk further. This is your screen. Can you bring me my screen? Yeah, one minute. I'll just share the screen, sir. Yeah, I got it. You can see it now, right? Yes, sir. I have to make it full screen, one minute. Okay, I think you can see it. So I will yes. start. You can see it, yes. Mr. Ganesh? Yes, sir. I am able to see, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. All right. So I will start. And uh, this sir, is my name sir. of my initiative is Black Ribbon Initiative, and it is for cybersecurity. And uh, I have been doing this for 10 years. First, I used to go to all places all over the country. Whenever I had time, I used to go do take seminars, meet people face to face. I would love to come to Chennai and talk to you one day when Ganesh calls me uh, after this lockdown is over. Another thing I'll tell you is lockdown time is worse for cybersecurity because other crime, because all of us are at home, stay at home, right? This is the slogan. So at the time of uh, lockdown, it is even more challenging cyber crime because other crime, traditional crime, like, you know, murder, attempt to murder, uh, theft, burglary, rape, uh, molestation, abduction, all those crimes are reducing very fast because there's no movement, there is no interaction, there's no business trade, industry, of course, it's unlocking now slowly, but uh, Still, that crime is going down, but cyber crime is going up very fast in this time of lockdown because I say it is a true stay at home crime is cyber crime. The person who commits it can stay at home and commit it. And the person who becomes a victim can also stay at home and become a victim. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to meet anyone. So in this time of lockdown, it is even a bigger challenge. So let's talk. We are going to talk about it. Ganesh will call me afterwards. After lockdown, I love to come. Chennai is like, uh, I, I would love to come back. I've gone there many times. So. Um, Let's talk about uh, this uh, initiative of mine, Black Ribbon Initiative, I call it. 
uh, now we are in this sampark which is the webinar based earlier it was seminar based uh, we are going to talk about uh, cyber crime protection during uh, lockdown let's start now what is the use of cyberspace i will talk to you first about this what is cyberspace uh, what is the digital world virtual world uh, mm, uh, cyber world if i want to if i ask you uh, the definition you may not be able to give it to me because it may be something very long you may not know it even i don't know it so let us not get into uh, how uh, we are going to uh, what is the, the definition we will say what we do in it once we have decided what we have do what is the use of cyber world then taken together that will be the virtual world okay so according to me there are four five main uses of the cyber world five main uses small there are many but uh, if you uh, uh, if you group them there will be five let us start with the first once you understand what the world is then you can understand the security of this world first use of this world is information information is the biggest use of the cyber world correct information source of information which is the age we are living in today today we are living in the age which is called the information age all of us are living in that age there was information revolution in the 80s uh, in the 90s and early uh, 2000 now that revolution is over we are all living in an age which is called the information age so in that age with the name is information age the biggest thing is information in today's age more you keep i would recommend to all of you keep information and then use information smartly you will be the most successful you will be the most secure you will be more, the, the most happy everything comes with information today's world information is the biggest thing so for me for you everyone i'm here with you and talking about cyber security not because i'm a very senior police officer and i can come here and talk rubbish and you will listen to me no you are listening to me because i know more in this sphere than you do my information is more it's good for you to listen suppose any one of you has more information than me i should listen i cannot say that what will you teach me i'm a man with so much experience well, i don't care if i have that attitude i'm making a mistake it will harm me myself so information is the biggest thing in today's age there was a writer rather he was an economist his name american his name was alvin toffler 40 years back in the late 80s early 80s and late 70s he had written a book for which he got nobel prize for economics that book's name was future shock and in that book he had coined a phrase that phrase said information is power 40 years back people must be laughing at him i think at that time and saying what is this fellow talking money power is there muscle power is there energy power is there but information power what is he saying but today what that man said has come true today information is the biggest power for me for you for everyone not tell me uh, friends if information is the biggest power for you and me and everyone then what is the biggest power for a criminal of today's time a cyber criminal for him also, the biggest power is information. Whose information? Your information. The more he or she gets, the more easily they commit crime on you, cyber crime. So information is power even for a cyber criminal and it is your information. And the more they get, the better attack they do on you and commit crime on you, correct? Now tell me, who gives them this information about you, which becomes base of cyber crime on you? you yourself yes you're correct there are also other sources i'm not saying you are the only source but maximum information about you which goes to the wrong hand and becomes base of cyber crime on you is given by you very simple whole day we are leaking information about ourselves right we who, uh, where we go who we meet we talk whatever we want on the phone we share whatever we want on the whatsapp we put on anything on the chat whole day you're leaking information without even thinking and when this reaches the wrong hands it becomes base of cyber crime on you i will tell you an example just to give you just to tell you how it works my name is varun kapoor my uh, job indian police service right two bits of information my name my job suppose it reaches a cyber criminal maybe just as take an estimate five percent chance he has of committing crime on me okay with these two bits now third bit he comes to know my phone number Phone number is actually a very big uh, information in cyber crime it becomes vehicle for cyber crime okay anyway he comes to know or she comes to know the third bit now the percentage of success may become 15 percent now on top of it he comes to know that i'm a cyber security expert at least i think i am fourth bit his or her uh, success rate may become 25 percent now he comes to know my hobby is wildlife photography fifth information his his uh, ability to commit crime will become even better 
his percentage of uh, success. That's how it works. But who gives that information to them? Mostly by me. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, information security is a basis of cyber security. You have to secure your information. Nobody is going to do it for you. I told you, nobody comes between you and your device. You leak the information, you have to secure your information. Nobody is going to do it for you. And the more you leak, the more chances are that uh, cybercrime is committed on you. So please start from today, think and then do. Information security is the basis of cyber security. Start being secure today, start securing your information. People talk many big things with me. They come and tell me, oh, these banks have so much information about us on their servers. Their server gets hacked. We are so insecure. Yes, you are insecure. Why not? Then they say that this government, they collect so much information about us. And then uh, like uh, Aadhaar card and all. And now the latest uh, controversy, the Aroge Setu app and everything. Suppose it gets hacked. So much insecurity for us. Yes, it is. Of course. Why not? But let me tell you one thing. These organizations, government, whatever, collects information about you for a purpose. And that purpose is your benefit. They don't do it for fun. So they collect information about you and store information about you for a purpose, which is your benefit. And then they put in the best security systems which are available to secure the information which they have collected about you. They will put in the best software, security software, the best firewalls, the best uh, AI al algorithms, whatever, to secure the information which they have collected about you for a purpose, which is your benefit. Please let them do their job. They will do a good job. Don't bother about that. You please think about securing your information, which you are leaking. And maximum source of crime on you is the information leaked by you. And that you don't bother. So don't talk about others. They will collect information for a purpose, which is your benefit, and secure it as best as they can. Still, there can be some problem. There are. If you can put 100 locks in your house, that doesn't mean it will not be burgled. It can still be burgled. But they will do the job. They will do a good job. Let them do it. You do your job, which you're not doing at all. Suppose I tell you today, close Facebook, close WhatsApp. Very good. If you follow this advice, your sources of leakage will stop, will become less. Yes, of course, it's good. But will you do it? You will not do it. So this is no security advice. So I will say this. Please do it. Please do these things. But do it carefully. What you're sharing, whom you're sharing, when you're sharing, whether you should share or not share, at least start thinking. Once you start thinking, then you will start doing something about it. And when you start doing something about it, then you will become more secure. There is no doubt. So please secure your information and start from now. And another thing in this, I've written here two trillion searches on Google every year. I'll just give a simile. Uh, biggest, you know, the age, information age. What is the biggest power in today's age? Information. Which is the biggest source of information in today's time? Google. Then which is the biggest power in today's time? Google. A is equal to B. B is equal to C. So A is equal to C. This is a very old mathematical formula we learned when we were kids. Correct? That is why all these data-based companies, rather all these information-based companies like Google, WhatsApp, and uh, Instagram, and whatever, Facebook, they are the biggest corporations of today's times. Which is the biggest corporation in today's time? Google Alphabet, right? So all these data-based companies, this is the Chinese problem which is happening. We must have heard a lot of apps have been uh, invented. The same thing. All these information-based companies are the biggest corporations in today's time. Why? How? They don't even produce one needle. Do they produce one needle? No. They produce nothing. They don't charge you one rupee. You don't pay them anything, do you? No. They don't even show you an advertisement. Some people tell me, oh, they earn from advertisement. WhatsApp shows no advertisement. You know what is the price of uh, the value of WhatsApp? Many of you must be knowing. I don't know the value today, but four years back when WhatsApp was bought by Facebook, its value was 19.8 billion US dollars. That is one and a half lakh crore rupees. A company worth one and a half lakh crores doesn't make a needle doesn't charge you one rupee and doesn't make show you an ad then where does this money come from it must be coming from somewhere it's not from you what is classical marketing model classical marketing marketing model is somebody produces some uh, some company produces a goods or service and sells it somebody buys it then in that price is the cost and the profit that is classical marketing 
but this is not classical marketing. You are the main consumer and the user. You are paying nothing, but still it is billions of dollars. Somebody else must be paying. That means why do they pay? Because they, they buy your information. So your information is sold by these companies and make the billions of dollars. Of course, I'm not saying that they are doing a crime by selling your information. You are giving them the authority to do so. That is why they are selling. When you say, I agree, you sign a contract without reading the terms of service. Do you ever sign a document in the real world without reading what's written on top? Never. But in the virtual world, you can keep signing and saying, I agree, I agree, I agree, without even reading the terms of service. So you give them the authority, so they sell your information and earn billions of dollars. Okay. I am also not saying that they're selling your information to criminals. They are not. But they are selling to somebody, and from there it might reach the wrong hand. And once it reaches the wrong hand, that is the criminal's hand, then it forms basis of very big crime on you. Right? So what I want to tell you is your information is so expensive, so costly, that people are selling it and earning billions of dollars. And your information is so dangerous that if it reaches the wrong hand, it becomes the basis of a horrendous cyber crime on you. And nobody can save your information better than you. So better start doing it today. Commerce. This is the second use of uh, the virtual world. You know it. Online banking, online shopping, payment, transactions, transfers, bookings. So many things are done in the virtual world with, uh, with uh, this commercial activity. So this is a big use. Third use is uh, communication. This also you can understand. Uh, emails, phone calls, uh, SMSs, uh, way of communicating, contacting people. Big uh, use of the cyber world. Another one is social networking. This is another use. I'll just stop here for two minutes and I try to explain you the difference between communication and social networking. People are not realizing and doing all sorts of mistakes and getting into trouble. See, cybercrime is double-edged weapon. What I mean to say is in the real world where we live, if you make a mistake, then you might become victim of a crime, correct? But in the cyber world, if you make a mistake, then you may become a victim of a crime surely, but you may also become an offender by mistake. That is the problem in virtual world. Mistake can lead you to becoming a criminal also. I will tell you why. Main reason for that is because people are not understanding the difference between communication and social networking. That's why they're doing this. See, if you don't understand the difference between communication and social networking, you are making a mistake, correct? Now, on because you have already made the mistake, you don't know the difference, you do something in the cyber world, um, another mistake. So you make a mistake by mistake, okay? Not knowing the difference is a mistake, and on basis of that, you make a mistake. So you have basically made a mistake by mistake, okay? But let me tell you, I'm a police officer. There is no law in any world, any country, no law. And there is no law keeper in any uh, country also in the world who will tell you that if you have broken, if you have made a mistake by mistake and broken the law of that country, don't worry, you didn't know. Don't do it again. Say sorry, go. No. If you make a mistake by mistake and break the law of the land, you have still made a mistake. So mistake by mistake is still a mistake and you will be punished for it. So the best way is not to make the mistake. And how will you not make the mistake? Either you know the law, either you know the law of India for cybercrime. The law of India dealing with cybercrime is Information Technology Act, IT Act. You must have heard about it. IT Act is a law. Either you know what is written in that law, then you will not make a mistake by mistake. Very simple or you understand this difference between communication and social networking learning the law knowing the law tough job if you can learn it very good everyone should know their law i don't i i, I support it but if you cannot learn it then please understand this difference and then follow what i'm going to say so that you don't make that mistake by mistake which is a mistake and get punished for it okay so let me try to explain the difference between communication and social networking. There may be many differences between communication and social networking, but the main difference between communication and social networking is this, which I'm trying to tell you. Communication is with the people you know, the people you want to communicate with, okay? The people you know and the ones you want to communicate with, whereas social networking can be with anyone on this globe who has access to internet maybe. You may not know that person and you may not even want to give your ideas or your communication to that person, but still that person might get your communication. That is a difference. So you're not doing it with people you know and people who are like you. I'll give you an example. Suppose I say something against some person. I want to say something against some institution, some religion, some community. Suppose 
I say it on phone to somebody I know, or I call 10 people, sit with them and talk these things, or as SMS or an email, whatever. Then I know those people. I want to tell them these things. That's why I'm communicating with them, correct? They may be like me. They will agree. Okay, right. You're saying the right thing. Fine, we agree. But suppose I post the same thing online or share the like or forward. Then it might go to a person who doesn't who, do, who doesn't agree with me and says, no, Mr. Kapoor, you have, you, you have said this. I don't agree. He might report. If he reports and what I have said is against the law, then I will be punished. Then I cannot say, oh, I didn't know. Huh? So that is the difference. You must understand. So please do responsible social networking behavior. People are not doing it. all over the world. It's a problem. Societies are being torn apart by irresponsible social networking behavior of citizens. Please do not become part of it. It is not uh, communication, it is social networking. So you will have to see the difference and be responsible and you're not doing it with the people you know. Okay, so communication and social networking is difference. You have told you one last thing I will tell you, then I'll go forward. I'm saying sh uh, sharing, liking and forwarding can also lead you to trouble. Why am I saying that? I will tell you now. In the Indian um, uh, Act, IT Act, please listen carefully. Yeah? If you, this is for your benefit, for nobody else's benefit. I'm getting nothing out of it. So uh, I will tell you this. Uh, communication and social networking, they may, uh, there is one thing written in the Indian Information Technology Act. What does it say? The key word is transmission. Yeah? That if in the virtual world you transmit anything, which is illegal, which is obscene, which is against some person, against some institution, whatever, then you are doing a crime. Anything, transmission. Now, what is transmission? Transmission is posting something, right? You write some comment, you post some video, that's uploading. So posting is transmission, yes. Hosting is also transmission. What is hosting? You make a website and, you know, you put content which is illegal or you, this kind of seminar we do and talk all illegal things, hosting. So hosting and posting is definitely transmission. But sharing, forwarding, and liking is also transmission. Why? It is not your content. It is somebody else's content. But because you have shared it, because you have liked it, you have transmitted it further. So you become part of the crime. If the original content was a crime, you have transmitted it further and become a part of the offense. You cannot say, I have not done it. It's not mine. It is somebody else's. So what? You have transmitted it further. So please be very careful when you um, uh, do social networking. Firstly, uh, by posting and hosting, definitely, and also by liking, sharing, forwarding. You cannot do illegal things which are against the law. Last is entertainment. You know it. Uh, uh, games and uh, uh, movies and songs and whatever. So when you do these, all these things, this you do in the real world also. But when you do it with the device, you are living in the virtual world. How much time are you spending in it? I'll tell you quickly. I did a research three years back. Three years old figure must have changed a lot. But here, three years back what it was, so you can understand what it may be now. Three years back, I did a research in Indore, where I am now. How much time our school children and our college students are spending in the virtual world of one day? Research. It is not. Um, it is not estimate. Three years back, the figures I got was for high school students, 10th, 11th, 12th. 22% of one day's time they are spending in the virtual world. Correct. And for college students, like some of you, it is 29.8%. That means nearly 30% of one day's time, people, college students were spending in virtual world. Th three years back if this three 30 percent has become 50 percent i will not have any doubt it may have half our lives we are spending in the virtual world so what are we doing about security are you understanding difference between social network and communication maybe not are you doing information security maybe not are you changing mindset no so start doing it's very important half your life you're spending there and not doing anything about security so you can imagine what a situation can be cyber crime i'll skip this cyber crime a basically definition is is crime committed using electronic device this is what is written in our law so it is a crime by a electronic device i just want to say one thing in this slide that if you think that cyber crime is only connected with computer laptops with mobile phones with internet then you are wrong it is not only it is also most of the cyber crime is occurring through these things uh, uh, mobile a computer laptop net internet and all that most of it but not all of it right I mean to say any device which can be programmed can be used to do a cyber crime on you. It's an electronic function. Okay. Uh, Bhopal is the capital of my state. One year back, a crime was registered in the cyber cell in Bhopal, in which one dealer of Whirlpool company, Whirlpool company makes uh, washing machines. 
So this fellow was doing cyber crime on his customers when he used to sell them washing machine. Why? Because washing machine is an electronic device. It can be programmed. So he was programming it in such a way and doing a crime. So please remember, today all devices we use are programmable. It may be AC, fridges, uh, TV, cars, whatever. They all can be programmed and all can be used to commit cyber crime on you. You have to be very careful. If you only think internet, phone, mobile, um, uh, computer, you're making a mistake. Most of it there, but not all of it. Now we'll talk about the crime. Uh, there are five, six crimes I'd like to discuss, which is uh, happening in the campuses with students, with the children. Well, let's talk about them. First crime, big crime, cyberbullying. One of the worst crimes, <coughs> which is happening uh, with youngsters, with everyone actually, but with youngsters definitely. Bullying. Bullying itself is a very bad crime. Bullying means troubling someone, pushing someone, insulting someone, making someone look down, uh, another child, another young man, young girl who studies with you. Why? Just to uh, for your entertainment. I am very much against this crime. I have I told you I go all over the country. I have seen it. Many people come to me with advice, asking advice. I have seen this crime with many people. Only bullying itself is very bad. It can break the child. It can break the youth. You know, people stop these children and young people stop eating, stop sleeping, stop stop going out, lose confidence, become depressed, become suicidal. So many things happen just by this bullying. I'm very much against it, and I believe very strongly that even if it's because another child does it on the child, no 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 uh, big criminal comes. Another child doesn't doing it on another child. So. For his own entertainment, such children should be punished. If they have to go to jail, they must go to jail, because nobody has the right to spoil somebody else's life just for his or her entertainment. And I've seen many cases like that. So um, uh, itself, cyber, uh, itself bullying is very bad crime. But when you add technology to it, it becomes cyber bullying. It becomes even worse. Why? Because of this. Because cyber bullying it spreads faster. It has a wider audience and it follows children home 24 hours okay uh, I, I i used to talk to college students and uh, uh, school children ask them why is bullying so bad right why what why do you feel bad so they used to tell me that it is because uh, we feel insulted alone you feel bad in front of two three other people insulting your prestige worse but that is real world bullying but when you add this uh, technology it becomes um, cyber bullying it becomes even worse you press one button the whole school comes to know college comes to know yeah? so it spreads faster wider audience that much more time of insult and feeling of uh, you know shame that is why it is so much more dangerous and that is why it has to be controlled and i believe the campus authorities are not should take very strict action against such people who do this i'll tell you one case there is the indian institute of management iam in indore there one girl was there and uh, she was not she was not even a child you know she was a grown up girl she was doing post graduation now that girl uh, was a gold medalist she was a brilliant girl and future was very bright then she started being cyber bullied and very bad bullying her parents were very careful i, I believe they monitored the child her, the girl's activities i will request all teachers here all all the parents if they are you have to monitor your children online we don't monitoring is zero we feel our child is sitting with device in front of us. Okay, good, safe, secure. Because we think in the terms of a real world, physical world. We think security, but it's not security. Uh, what the child is doing in that world, because I told you it's full of criminals and crime and problems, we don't bother. So you must monitor. Like awareness is knowing and doing. Monitoring is also not only looking and watching and seeing. Monitoring is looking, watching, seeing, and then doing something about it if you find some problem. Okay. So the parents of this girl must have been quite uh, good monitoring uh, on monitoring. They brought her to me. And I uh, talked to her. I found out the problem. She was being cyber bullied. Very bad bullying, obscene on uh, YouTube, on so many things. She was losing all her life. Little more time, she would have been permanently damaged. Cyber bullying and bullying has permanent damage potential. If it continues for too long, it is permanent damage. The child and the boy or the girl can never be the same again. And monitoring has to be done by parents and teachers. Okay. So uh, this girl I talked to, monitoring I did. And then uh, mother, she told me the truth uh, about the bullying. We followed the footprints. Another thing I would like to tell all the students here. Please, there is something called a digital footprint. In the real world, best evidence, fingerprint. Why? Because it is unique to a person. 
right? In the virtual world, it is digital footprint. It is unique to the user. Whoever uses a device leaves some data behind when he does any activity in the virtual world. That is your digital footprint, and that is also unique. Like a fingerprint, you can hide, you can wear gloves, you can hide a fingerprint. A fingerprint you can remove. Suppose I, my fingerprint is made on the table. I can take out my, my handkerchief and wipe it. It will be gone. So a fingerprint you can hide, you can remove, you can do so many things. You can change probably. But a digital footprint you cannot even remove, change, and hide. Once made, it is made. You cannot do anything about it. And it is unique, as I told you, to the user and the person indirectly. So you will be caught. Whatever you do, new criminals come, they come up with very, very big technologies, like they will come up with the um, uh, Tor browser. Sometimes they will come up with um, uh, a proxy server. Sometimes they'll come dark net. You know, they come up with new technologies to do what? Basically, they're trying to cover their digital footprints, mask them. But you take out one by one the layer, you will reach the original footprints. So you cannot change, you cannot hide, you cannot remove. So make your digital footprints as good as possible. Don't think you will not be caught. You will be. So that's why I recommend to you. If you think, oh, nothing will happen to me, nobody will know. Oh, let me do this for fun. Even if you're doing it for fun, but if it's against the law, you're going to get trouble, sir. So please make your digital footprints as good as possible. Now, this case of the girl, we followed the digital footprints. We caught the criminal. You know who, who it was? It was another girl. And who the girl was? It was the girl who was her best friend, who used to spend most of the time with her. She was doing this online. You can't even know who's doing it. Anyway, long story, but now everything is okay. She's settled, monitored in time, safe. But a little late, she might have lost her whole future. So please, cyberbullying is a big problem and you must be very careful. That's what, uh, these are the ways of doing it. We are not interested in the ways, we are only interested in the solutions. So this is what I recommend to all the youngsters and all the children. First of all, best response, no response. You must not respond to online bullying. Hmm? Otherwise, you'll also become the same as that bully. First, best response, no response. Second, block the bully. Block means unfriend, block, break contact. Third, save the evidence. Before you block, save the evidence. Screenshot, print screen, save the video, bullying, whatever it was, you must save it because you have to use it. Then set up a new account, talk to an adult, make a report. You are all young boys and girls. You may be adults. Okay, I agree. But you are still not very mature enough to look after every aspect of your life. You must talk to an adult and then, if required, make a report and take action. But do not keep uh, uh, suffering it for long. This is in Hindi. I will tell you what it means because in my area, it's in. this is the language. So this is the cutting. Somebody troubled a girl so much on WhatsApp that she said, I will eat poison. This is cyberbullying at its worst. See that word dost. Dost means friend. And in inverted commas, why? Because it is a virtual friend. That person was not known to the girl. But we believe that they're very good friends. Never even seen, never even met, but the best friend. So this is cyberbullying. It should be avoided. And you, I've told you what to do about it. Now, next type of crime I'd like to talk to you. But it's not a crime. It's a big problem. It's online gaming. Okay, my friends, please listen carefully. Online gaming. See the word gaming. It is not game. It is not a it is not a sports it is not a game it is a business okay it is not a sports it's not games it is gaming that means it is a business and when does a business do well when people use it play it as much so more profit that's why these people who run these gaming uh, rackets will make you play more and become addicts and even worse okay so um, uh, this uh, WHO, World Health Organization, in its latest finding on, um, on uh, online gaming has said that now it, uh, if you use online gaming too much, then it is even beyond addiction. It has become a mental disorder, means it's a disease. So you don't want to become diseased by just doing online gaming. So please control yourself. Online gaming is not a game. It is a business. And you have to do it for a fixed time. And parents and teachers have to monitor and ensure that time should be fixed, not beyond a limit, so that it becomes disease. And there are many problems to see this. What happens? Skipping school, loss of appetite, lack of sleep. One case in South Korea where a teenager, 50 hours he played continuously online game and died because he never slept. 
he kept on playing and playing and playing and he died also so see lack of sleep lack of exercise mental depression suicide violence another problem i was just reading this this case of vietnam 13 year old grandson killed his 80 year old grandmother because she did not give him six dollars to play an online game and that online game was full of violence so violence content is also there which we must avoid so please monitor your children please monitor your youth and all the youth here monitor yourself you are you, you can understand so fix time if you have to do gaming fix the time okay second fix the content don't play these violent full of blood bullets gory games okay fix time fix content next is online grooming this is another big problem grooming is what grooming is getting ready grooming somebody is making somebody ready for what for doing something wrong so this is very easily done in the cyber world i have seen two characteristics in children and in young people well more in children which lead them to disaster in this field those two characteristics you're a child you will have it one is that you will be innocent second children will be adventurous means adventurous means they want to try everything innocent means that then they don't know what to do about it if they get into trouble they don't understand what's happening and then when they are in problem they don't know what to do see awareness is very good for children also but children awareness is not the only thing monitoring is very important because children know but still do mistakes even if they're aware and then they don't know what to do about it so you have to be very you have to monitor your children this online grooming is a very big problem you know these i will scroll down to the bottom see and innocent and adventurous that's why what do, what do these people do first they will do social engineering it's another word very important what is social engineering social engineering is finding out about you uh, and who will tell you will tell about you as i told you before everything we do we tell about what we write what we like what we wear where we go what we eat who are our friends which place we visit which hotel we stay which car we drive we tell everything once we tell everything they will do engineering they will find out about a child and everything okay children share more young people share more they will engineer they will find out then what will they do then they will do some stalking find your activities online what are you doing who are your friends and all that once that, that is done then they make a profile and they make a friend with that child okay the child is adventurous he says as many friends very nice we'll make friends now they will keep chatting grooming making ready now chatting will be there friendship will be there the child will never even have seen that person but becomes so important that the child or the young person i also have two sons i know the, that person online becomes so important more important than you than the father and the mother yeah, because they never even met that is grooming now when they are in total groomed now they will tell them some secrets the child will think there's another child i'm chatting with actually because they will make that profile of a child after finding out about the young person i will also study in a college in some uh, neighboring college and all that so they will become friends then they will uh, share secrets they will tell some false secrets and the child, the child and the young person will tell his actual secrets once the secrets are known then they will start blackmail oh though you did this i'm going to tell your family i'm going to tell all your friends old school old college now they get uh, trapped now they don't know what to do innocent so they will not any tell anyone because they're trapped they think they will find a solution but they won't because those are criminals and they are children and young people and they get trapped they will not share they will not tell their parents they will not take guidance and they will get more and more trapped and that's how it works then they will do obscene things with these children photographs and then pedophilia it is very terrible nobody can save your children and young people please the young people who are here your college students please be careful it's not a world full of uh, fun and games it is very dangerous out there you have to follow all the things i've told you for the children please for, it is monitored by the parents and the teachers and their uh, elders this is a very uh, sad case of amanda todd she was a canadian 15 year old girl who committed suicide why she was being groomed she had been groomed by somebody and the uh, same thing happened to her she then had to make send her obscene photographs to that man and um, ultimately she committed suicide and before she committed suicide she posted a video online uh, in youtube and uh, she showed these kind of flashcards to tell what happened to her what sad things happened and how she died Hmm. and it, was, it made a lot of problem in the world but then very sad case okay this man was caught of course his name was Iden Corbin he was from Holland in 2014 he was caught he had done it with many other children so now he's waiting extradition to Canada but uh, be careful online grooming is a problem children have to be saved by the parents they need awareness also they need to be talked to also but they also need to be monitored 
and young people like you, many of you who are students, please be very careful. It's not fun and it's not games, as I told you. One more thing I'd like to talk to you about is cyber stalking. Cyber stalking, big problem, but only mostly for women and girls. And you have to be very careful when you are in the virtual space, as I told you. In the real world, when somebody stalks, what is stalking? Following someone, right? So when someone stalks someone in the real world, the girls and the ladies can see that person. Every day I come out of college, he's following me. Every day I come out of my house, somebody, that same guy is there and sitting on a motorcycle and coming behind me. You can see the danger. So you do something about it. But online, you cannot see the danger. You think it is not there and you don't do anything about it. What is online? Uh, what is cyber stalking? Somebody giving you missed calls again and again. Somebody sending you friend requests. Somebody sending you again and again SMS. Trying to approach you in uh, chat rooms. Sending you emails. All this uh, uh, checking your profile again and again. This um, constitutes cyber stalking. Be very careful. It can be done by someone who's very who's your friend and all that who's just trying to trouble you, which is also wrong. I will tell you. Uh, but it may be even a psychopath. I will tell you a case of Bangalore. There was a girl. A woman rather she was working in the IT sector and um, uh, imagine IT sector she was being cyber stalked and she didn't do anything about it because she never saw the danger she thought I don't know who it is so she took it easy and uh, then it became so much that she thought that somebody's all somewhere around and doing it so she left the job she left the job in Bangalore took another job in Pune in another IT uh, thing and what do we uh, young people do when you go to some new place, when you meet some new person, when you do some good thing, when you uh, everything, when you do good, what do you do? You take a selfie and you post it online and say, I'm so happy, this new thing, that new thing. This is what she did. Just imagine she was being cyber, cyber stalked. She was from IT sector, but still she said this, did the same thing. She put a photograph. She did not put the name of the place or the company, but I'll tell you ahead, even if you don't put the name of the place where you are or the, or the uh, city, you can still be stalked, uh, caught. But this girl did it, uh, the, the posting and uh, of this content of uh, her photograph and that person saw it because he was anyway cyber stalking it. Her. He reached that place one evening when she came down from the office. He was standing there. He recognized her very well. She didn't even know what he looked like. And when he was passing, when she was passing by, he said, oh, you want to run away from me? So go run. Let's see how far you can run. She then realized that it was that guy. She must have tried to run. He followed her. He stabbed her to death. Hmm? But Again, because she took it very light. So don't think because there is no danger in front of you, that means there is no danger. Hmm? This is the case of Indore. I'll tell you again. Stabbed 38 times a Facebook stalker, woman dies. 38 times in this city where I live. This was in 2018. Her name is Supriya Chen. That guy did it in the main square of uh, the city. 38 times he stabbed her. For Facebook stalking. You should be very careful. You can't see the danger. That means the danger is not there. Don't be like that. Ostrich attitude. Don't have it. So if, if I want to say this, if any girl, because girls and women are more main targets of this, if any girl ever feels that she's being stalked online, please do not ignore it. Please take it seriously. It may be somebody who's just troubling you, pulling your leg, which is also wrong. But it may be somebody else. It may be a psychopath, like in these cases. So you must report and uh, take corrective measures. Otherwise, it may be too late. For the men and boys who are here, I would like to recommend to you, please do not do it even for fun because it's your age you're all youngsters you might have the feeling oh let's trouble this girl let's give her a message again and again friend request you might feel that but suppose that first of all you will create a lot of doubt a lot of pressure for that girl she'll feel very scared because she won't know who's doing it first of all secondly if she reports which she should as i told you we should not ignore you should report so if she reports then you will be caught because the digital footprints will not let you survive uh, be mother uh, escape then you cannot say that I did it just for fun. Cyber stalking in Indian law, you can see this 354D, it is written in red. This is Indian Penal Code. It is 354D section says that in India, if you cyber stalk a woman, you're doing a crime. And the punishment for that crime is seven years. So be very careful. Do not do it. It might lead you to trouble. You will trouble the girl, first of all, mentally. And if she reports, you're going to go to jail and you're going to get punished. So be very careful. And all the girls, Please do not ignore, please report. If you ever feel it, don't ignore it. Next is Facebook stalking. There are one or two more things, then I will finish. Facebook stalking, I would like to, social media is very dangerous also. Like I told you, the difference you don't know, you can become an offender. But Facebook uh, and uh, otherwise also, and these kind of social media platforms are a big source of crime also. It's very nice to use them, good, good fun to connect, right? Good, many good things, but many bad things also. 
So you please protect yourself from the bad and accept the good and pre prevent the bad. That should be your motto. I will explain this case to you. You will understand what I mean and how easy it is to commit crime on uh, social media because people are not thinking and people are not being careful and not doing anything about it. That's why I always say that you should always have a uh, uh, only those people you know very well you should accept friend requests from don't get into contest of who has more friends keep your group of friends small these are all security advices see i hope you have a pen and paper you should write these down actually but anyway even if you don't please try to remember them see there is a crime called phishing in the cyber world it's the worst crime most of the many crimes are based on this phishing attack right Financial crimes, definitely, to take money from you, from your banks. You're all young people. I don't believe you should have so many uh, so many cards and accounts. So I'm not talking about financial crime with you. But there are, phishing is the base of many other crimes, like bullying, like stalking, like uh, human trafficking, like child pornography, like uh, uh, that I told you, pedophilia, grooming. What is the base? Phishing. The first, phishing is what? Trying to trap you, trying to in, in, entice you to do something wrong. Right. So phishing is very uh, common. It's, it's a very dangerous crime based of many cyber crime. If you have to save yourself from phishing, there is one uh, advice I'll give you. Please follow it. And as I told you, you have to follow it every time, not sometime. That advice is in the virtual world. You should have no contact with the unknown source. If the source is unknown, have no contact and no contact every time, not sometimes. What do I mean? If you get a friend request from an unknown source, don't accept it. If you get a um, uh, call from an unknown source, don't start talking and keeping uh, giving all type of information. Don't pick it up, first of all. Even if you pick it up and it's unknown and somebody's talking some, don't give information, don't talk, disconnect. Third, if you get an email from an unknown source, don't press download of any attachment. Fourth, if you get an SMS from an, any unknown source, don't press any link. So this is a basic, uh, if you do this in the virtual world unknown source no contact means no contact and no contact means every time no contact right? not sometimes then i'm sure you'll be safe from a number of cyber crimes which occur and second stage of course is there is verification you know there is a thing called spoofing spoofing is what being something showing something i can send you an email from my id i can show some other id i can give you a phone call from my phone and show some other phone spoofing email spoofing call spoofing SMS spoofing, profile spoofing, everything is possible. So even if it looks genuine, it may not be genuine. I told you it's virtual. So first is if it is unknown, there should be no contact. If it is known, still you should verify. Please do not follow your, uh, by keeping your eyes closed. Suppose you get a, a friend request from my profile. You don't know me, so reject it. But suppose you know me, then try to phone me. Means you must have some other way to contact me other than Facebook. Phone me and ask me, have you sent me a friend request? I will say yes, suppose. Then you can decide what to do, accept or reject. If I say no, then what is it? Reject. So this is what I'm saying. In the virtual world, no contact with the unknown. First principle, no contact means every time no contact. And second is verification, verify, even if it looks correct. So please follow this. Anyway, I'll tell you a case which will make it very clear to you. This case is from Australia. Australia city of Sydney, the biggest city in Australia. This case happened three years back. Now, in that case, you can see this boy's photograph at the bottom. Christopher, his name is 25 year old man. If you see his photography, does he look a criminal and crook? No, he doesn't. He looks like a normal person who must be looking in Australia. OK, no, but he was not normal. He was a crook. He had just been um, uh, released from prison uh, for kidnapping a 19 year old girl. He had come out on bail. But that was his job, you know, that was his uh, problem. He wanted to do it, do the same thing again. But this time he decided that he will not do it in the real world. He'll do it in virtual world. Real world, it is so difficult to go to some girl, try to convince her, try to take um, confidence to her, try to put her in your web and then do some crime. So he thought that's very difficult. Let me do it on virtual world, much easier. Fishing, I can do it with so many together. And then wait, somebody will get trapped, see. And they trapped, somebody did. See what he did. So simple it is for this crime. You, me, anybody can become victim if you are not uh, careful. What do we do? We share all type of content. I told you, we don't even think. See, there are settings, okay? There is setting in Facebook, setting in Gmail, setting in WhatsApp, setting in your device. Everything has settings. Why are those settings there? Those settings are there for one, for improving your experience of using that device or service, okay? The second is for security. 
because we don't even bother to see the settings. So people keep posting anything online in Facebook and all, they don't even have any control over the settings. Who is seeing where the content is going, they're not bothered. They keep posting. So what? Nothing can happen. What will happen? Because no danger to be seen, but there is danger, no? So what this, this person did, he started reviewing the content of all 19 and 20 year old girls in Sydney, the public content, which the girls were putting without even thinking, sharing everything. So he started reviewing that. In that content, he found the content of this girl called Nona, whose photograph is also there. She was another 19 year old girl. And she had a very big speciality. What was it? It was she was an animal lover, pet lover. And where do we express all our greatnesses, all our likes, all our dislikes and all that online in Facebook and other services like that social media. She had done the same thing. Now he came to know that she was a very big animal lover. OK, by what? By information she gave herself. I told you before information security. Now what this fellow did so simple. He make a, made a fake, fake profile in the name of some Gordon Green. And he found out in Sydney who is the biggest uh, um, uh, animal NGO, animal welfare NGO. Biggest, because he knew she will be knowing the name because she was such a big animal lover. Now he made a profile anybody can make in the name of that NGO and showed himself as to be the HR manager of that NGO. And he sent a friend request to her. Now, what is she going to do? She's such a big animal lover and she gets a friend request from a person who works in the biggest NGO for animal welfare. What is she going to do? She will be very happy, I'm sure. She said, yes, they became friends. Okay, now she didn't even see the danger. Now, uh, these people are criminals. They will not do anything immediately. First, he kept chatting with her very nicely, no nothing. Six months. When she came, now he realized, now she's in my control. Then he took the next step. What did he do? He offered her a job. He wrote to her one day that this is a job in my organization. Uh, this is the pay. This is the what you have to do. Do you want to join? Now, what is he going to do? What do you think she's going to say? Working in the NGO, biggest NGO for animal welfare, prestigious. She's going to, what is she going to do? What she loves to do anyway, animal uh, welfare. And what she's going to get money for it also. And who's offering the job? Her best friend. Now, six months, virtual friend, but very good friend. She had full trust in him. So she said, yes, she must have been so happy. She mustn't have slept the whole night. He said, okay, I'll come tomorrow morning. I'll pick you up. We'll go to the office. Uh, I'll take a formal interview and you'll get your job. He came the next morning. She went with him. He took her out of Sydney. He raped her. He murdered her, strangulated, and then um, buried her and came back because that was his job. So, and after one and a half months, they found the body of Nona. Digital footprints, I told you, can go nowhere. The police reached Christopher. He was arrested. And in December 2018, he was sentenced to 21 years of jail for the rape, murder, abduction of Nona. In the, they say that in Australian history, harshest punishment for a criminal. Because in Australia, they don't have uh, capital punishment. So they said this is the worst punishment for anybody we have ever given. Because tell me, can Nona come back? No. Tell me, who could have saved her? nobody she could have only saved herself i told you not crime between you and your device who knows what you're doing on this device and then after that what are you doing after that following up nobody could have saved her except she herself if she was aware if she was alert she would have not died this is for sure so please start thinking and doing from today fake profile i've talked before don't post your phone number I always say in the social networking sphere, don't post phone numbers, don't post addresses, don't give status update with time and place reference together. Privacy setting, friends only is the best. So many security measures. See, I'm telling you, you should note it and remember them at least. If you don't see this is a case in Hindi, it's written, but I'll tell you in English what happened. This is a case of, again, my city in Lord. See, I stay here, so I've got content from here. This must be happening all over India and in your state also, in your city, Chennai also. So this uh, uh, girl was there. You can see a photograph. Her name was Kiran. She was a 17-year-old girl. Very good student appearing for IIT, preparing for IIT. Very uh, nice student, but she did one mistake after the other and see what she had to face. Now, this girl uh, got a friend request from another 16-year-old girl who she did not know. And she said, yes, first mistake. Friendship with unknown, which I told you before. First mistake. Now what happened? After a few months, that person said to her that I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. Her, his name was Amit. It is written below. He was a 22-year-old boy from a neighboring city of Indore. He was also no criminal. He was a railway officer's son, a graduate engineer uh, looking for a job. So he was from a good family, educated boy. He was not a criminal. 
But after he told her that I have um, told you a lie and made friends with you, still she kept talking to him. Reckless behavior, second mistake. Now what happened, her uh, IIT exam came, any uh, the uh, JE. Now she didn't have time because she was a very good student. So she stopped talking to him. He must have pestered her, she blocked him. He blocked him, but she had already made a third mistake, which was fatal. What was it? She had already posted her phone number, address, everything on a social networking profile. He knew it. One day he came to her house. He knocked the door. The mother opened. He stabbed the mother five times. Then he get into the room. There he met the girl. He had some fight with the girl. He stabbed her 22 times. 22. And then he jumped off from the second floor and broke his leg. And he was caught on the scene of crime. But even if he was not caught on the scene of crime, he would have been caught later. Digital footprints. They took the mother and the daughter to the hospital. The daughter died. The mother survived. Who made the mistake? Ultimately, you can guess. Okay. So this is a danger. Selfie itis. This is the problem. Don't take too many selfies, please. It is leading to death of people. It is also a disorder. According to WHO, selfie itis is a disease. So keep it within limits. Uh, it just keep it for your memory. Take few selfies and uh, post even fewer because it can lead you to trouble. Every selfie does not have to be posted. It is for your own memory, own, uh, own uh, record, not for posting every selfie. Take it less and post even less. Photographs talking, this is the last thing I'll talk about, then I will finish. I talked to you before about photograph, how it can you can be followed by a photograph if you're not careful. I will tell you how. See, what is this called? This is called a smartphone. Why is it called a smartphone? Not because today everything is, we, there is a tradition, there is a fad of calling everything smart. Smart city, smart bus, smart toothpaste, smart toilet, smart TV, smart fridge, everything is smart, except human beings. We are the most dumb people in the world now. Huh? Everything is smart. No, it's not because of that. This is the original device which was called smart. Why was it called smart? Because it has some features which make it smart, right? If you don't know the features and you're using that device, then one day that device is going to become smarter than you. Then the device is going to use you you are not going to use the device okay why is it one of the features in this smartphone which makes it smart that feature is called gps you must have heard about it G global positioning system how does it that means your exact location how does that gps pick up from your latitude longitude it picks up the latitude longitude from where you are fixes your exact location gps so when you buy a smartphone from the market a new one and you put it on by default, the GPS comes on. You don't have to press any button. It is enabled. So a device, a smartphone is has a GPS a feature. If you don't know, very bad. Now with such a device, when you take a photograph in which GPS is enabled, your latitude and longitude gets tagged with the photograph. That's called geo tagging. That is another feature. Again, if you don't know it, you're making a mistake so you must know the features of the devices you're using if you don't know problem no better so i'll tell you, there was a case i'll tell you how it works it's very simple there's a case in united kingdom london there was one girl she uh, won a lottery actually she won some money pounds she got the notes home she put it on a, a table and she made her grandmother sit with her and she took a selfie and posted it online see how happy i am i have won so much money i've become rich uh, status update every time thing we must put online okay now these people are called online predators what is a predator predator is a hunter actually so they are called online predators they are roaming about in cyberspace only looking for such content which is of their benefit and when they find it then they do something about it so this girl posted such a photograph they found it this predator so they what will they do so easy it is now now they download that photograph okay if it is taken from a smartphone so when they click the right click on that photograph they will reach the properties and inside the properties they will find the latitude longitude because there is geotagging now they have found the latitude longitude from where the photo was taken now what i what do they have to do they copy the latitude longitude and they paste it in google maps google maps also works on latitude longitude so when they pasted that uh, longitude latitude longitude on google maps they can find the exact address so they found the exact address in london where this girl lived and they attacked her house they killed her grandmother they killed her and they took all her money so i want to say one thing who gave the invitation invitation was given by the girl herself without thinking yeah i have so much money i'm a young girl i have an old grandmother with me 
I am alone. Come take the money. They came, they took the money, and in the process, they murdered her also and her grandmother. So you have to be very careful when you are doing these things. This is a case, similar case of Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian was, is a American reality star. You know her, maybe. Now this woman, with her mother and her sister, they went to Paris for a holiday. They took a lot of jewelry, a lot of money. They went and lived in a very big apartment. And in that apartment, they put on all the jewelry and all that. And they took a lot of photographs with all the jewelry in that big apartment. And they put all the photographs on Instagram saying, what a life. See, we are the people who enjoy. What are you? You have nothing. Something like that. You know? And now, invitation given. Online predators found it. They accepted the invitation. They came one afternoon into the house. Kim Kardashian was not there. Her mother and her sister were there. They beat them up. They tied them up. They took all their money and the jewelry. But again, who gave the invitation? So I have to be very careful. Know your features of a device and then use them. Otherwise, you are heading for trouble, sir. So I will tell you this. First of all, selfies should be taken as few as possible. They can be, uh, they can threaten your life. You know, people die taking selfies. Selfies less as less as possible posting them even less because they are for your record and memory don't post everything and third even if you're posting selfies from this kind of devices please check the settings turn off the look like this uh, this is the uh, iphone now in iphone there is a thing called setting go to settings when you access settings there will be one thing called um, uh, privacy settings go into privacy settings you will find location services Op open that uh, section you will find camera switch off the camera location service so next time when you take a photograph, your latitude, longitude will not be tagged with that photo. So that is what I'm trying to say. It is that you have to take less selfies, post less selfies, and disable geotagging. Then you'll be safe from this crime. Okay, now I'll finish. Morphing is possible. You know what morphing is. Uh, challenges and dares. This is the last thing. See, challenges and dares are many. Blue whale challenge, you've heard about it. Children followed it 50th day, they died. Huh? Suicide. So I believe that challenges and dares are online just for they're just nonsense your real challenge your real dare is to make something good in your life accept that challenge accept that dare work hard study hard play hard whatever you're good at do it very well and succeed that is the real challenge in life that is the real dare this online challenges and dares lead to disaster do not accept them okay i will give you the last five key points you might have heard what i said you might have uh, remembered what I said. I would have, I love if you remember what I said, but even if you don't, please remember these five last points I'm giving you. Mantra, mantra for uh, cybersecurity, consider it that. Let us talk that and then I'll finish. First is always have a mindset of safety and security. It is a different world. It is full of challenges, dangers. I've told, told hundreds of times the challenges and dangers, change your mindset and make a mindset of security then you will be thinking of security you will be doing something okay so change your mindset and have a mindset of security in the cyber world also second avoid shortcuts avoid greed most of the cyber crime in the cyber space occurring financial crime are based on the human tendency of greed you make a uh, sit at home you get a job sit at home you get a lottery sitting at home you get a relation it doesn't happen make it a motto that i will work for whatever i have to get in life i will not fall for this kind of greed then you'll be safe. Do it. Avoid shortcuts. Shortcuts may not lead you to the right direction, friends. You might and end up end up in the wrong place. So follow the long path. Like suppose you have to, you get a link. They may sometimes make you press the link and go to a fake site. Why do you have to always press links? Shortcuts. Technology has given you a lot of comfort and empowerment. Correct. But technology has also given comfort and empowerment and um, improvement for the work of cyber criminals because you cannot deny access of technology to anyone. So their life, their work has also become easy and empowered. Remember that. So they will offer you many things. You have to be smart. Suppose there is a shortcut, there's a link. You have to press and go to, you're a, you're a customer of State Bank of India. And they send some email to scare you or to trap you phishing. And they say, you press this link and go and do this in your site. And you press that link. You will go to a fake site maybe. And you will put all your information there and they'll get it. Why do you have to follow shortcut? Every time you just open a new tab, Type with your own uh, hands www.sbionline.com and enter. Press enter. You will reach the actual SBI site, not a fake site. Shortcut. Why do you have to follow it? Every time you log out of your uh, Facebook, of your Gmail, of whatever, why don't you log out fully? And next time when you come, enter the password 
with your own fingers and then you know, log in. Why do you have to keep yourself uh, signed in and automatically signed in? Why do you have to check that box? Why? Shortcut. Don't do it. These shortcuts will lead you to wrong direction. So avoid shortcuts, avoid greed. Third is think before you act. Whatever you do online, what you're posting, what you're liking, what you're sharing, what you're forwarding, just think. Think for five seconds. Give yourself five seconds. I'm three seconds. I'm sure you will not make a mistake. But if you do everything in a hurry, then sooner or later you'll make a mistake. Things done in a hurry generally may be wrong. Decisions making, taken with time, with thought, generally are right. So give yourself some time, think, and then act. You will be doing the right thing probably. Fourth is have full knowledge. This is the age of information. Information is the biggest power. I've told you, keep information. Security also needs information. Keep information, then use it, and use it every time. That's the motto you should follow. Last is, in cyberspace, do not trust anything blindly, everything. Because you are basically interacting with a screen. There is nothing in front of you. There is no person, there is no place, there is no situation. It is only a screen. So on this screen, you can be shown anything, you can be made to hear anything, everything cannot be the truth. Please keep it in mind and then uh, behave in the cyber world. These are my, uh, this is my Facebook page. I've got many pages. I work in wildlife security. I work in, in narcotics and so many fields. Cyber training also I do. This is this is cyber awareness page, www.facebook.com slash black ribbon initiative. I do a lot of research. I do a lot of publications and I've told you a lot of uh, column writing. I put it on this page. Please come to this page. Very few pages are there. I told you information is power. This is the security, cyber security information. Very few pages are like that available. Come to this page, like that page. And if your updates are on, the next time I post something on this page, you will get it in your feed. If you have time, read it. If you don't have time, read it next time. But you must come on this page. My phone number, uh, this is my WhatsApp number, and that is my email ID. If you want, you can contact me. People from all over India contact me, from Jharkhand, from Bihar. From, I get calls from any everywhere and emails uh, who want some guidance in some cyber crime which may have occurred, in some situation which they are facing. If I have any advice, I will give it to you. So you can contact me. This is all what I have to say, Ganesh. Please, if you can take over, if there are any questions, I can answer them, then we'll finish the session. Thank you so much for being so kind and listening. And uh, I hope what I have said is of use to you and you will implement it immediately and from today. Thank you so much, Rumba Nandri. Thank you very much, sir. It was uh, quite a informative and uh, very mind provoking, thought provoking speech, sir. Uh, we enjoyed probably. Uh, Thank you. So good to uh, students as well. And anyone, if you have any questions, please you 